national anthem. And if there's a tomorrow, we'll see and hear Sue Rainey. Right now, it'll be time to play ball right after this word. Taking a look at uh, college football in the uh, middle of the first, there's no scores yet between McNeese State and Louisiana. Again, in the middle of the first, Louisiana, Northeast Louisiana is leading Lamar 7 to nothing. Early in the second quarter, Florida A&M it leads Jackson State 6 to nothing. In the middle of the second, Tennessee Chattanooga leads Marshall 14 to nothing. Elsewhere, Alabama coach Bear Bryant blamed his seventh-ranked Crimson Tide's 13-13 tie with upstart Southern Mississippi Saturday on what he called disorganization and confusion. The Tide, leading 13-10, surprisingly called a timeout with eight seconds remaining, enabling Southern Miss to bring on its kicker, Steve Clark, who hit a 40-yard field goal to tie the game. For Southern Miss, it was a blessing in disguise because the Golden Eagles had no timeouts remaining. for the Dodgers to take the field. Game four of the series, and the Dodgers again in that corner. They scrambled out of it yesterday, getting three runs in the first inning, three runs in the eighth inning, and beating the Astros. So they've handled very well here in Dodger Stadium, but in Houston, another story. The Dodgers have won six out of the last seven between the two clubs here, and 12 out of 14, and now the Dodgers take the field. It'll be Sosa behind the plate. Alan Bola going to the mound. Garvey at first. Ropes at second. Russell at short. Guerrero at third. Baker in left. Landro in center. Mundy in right. Bobby Lillis coaching at first for the Astros. Don Leppard, veteran coach, in the third base line. The umpires, McSherry at the plate. Wire, Montague, Dale on the infield. Quick and Davidson not a, uh, manning the baseline. We have one section in the center field, right center field pavilion that is vacant. There's a whole strip of seats there that are empty. Uh, apparently, some group there has not made an appearance. We still have late arrivals coming in and cars out in the parking lot and a lot of folks coming into the ballpark. We can see a lot of empty seats so far, but the game is officially a sellout. So if you do not have a ticket, do not come by. And we hope that there will be a tomorrow for you. Valenzuela with a phenomenal year. 13 wins, 7 losses against the Astros on the regular year, 2-1. and one. And Fernando, 3-1 and one lifetime against Houston. And it's been a while since Fernando visited the winning circle. He has not had a win since September the 17th when he blanked the Braves here at Dodger Stadium on three hits and a 2 to nothing win. So this is his fifth start since his last win. And during that span, he's lost twice to Houston. At Houston, in the regular season, on the last day, he was 1-4. and four. The last game of that road trip in Houston, losing to Don Sutton. And then in the playoffs, losing to Nolan Ryan, 3-1. to one. After beating the Astros and flanking them twice early in the year, he pitched opening day and won on a five-hitter, 2 to nothing. And about 13 days later, beat the Astros in the Dome on a seven-hitter, 1-0. to nothing. And now we're set, underway, the Dodgers and the Astros, game four of the series. Terry Poole into the batter's box and the pitch on the way. A swing and a miss, strike one. Starts him off with a screwball and Terry Poole tried to hold up, but he's gone too far. Poole is three for 13 in the series at a 251 average overall for the year. Next pitch for Fernando, breaking ball that's low, one ball and one strike. One team is out, Kansas City. The other teams are all alive. Here's the pitch on the way. Bouncing ball in front of the plate. Out of Florida Socia. Makes his play to Garvey in time. And Poole on a check swing is thrown out. Tried to hold up the ball. Hit the bat roll 10 feet up the line. And Socia was out there on it. One away. And here's Phil Garner coming on. Strap iron. Two for 10 in the playoff series. At a 2.48 average overall. Philadelphia backed into the corner. And almost knocked out. But they came back, rallied, and... After blowing a four-run lead, recovered the win in 10 innings. And now tomorrow they have maybe an edge. They're at home with their ace against the ace of Montreal. It'll be Carlton and Rogers at Philadelphia tomorrow. Here's Fernando ready to pitch to Garner. The wind-up and down it comes. Screwball bounce through the line at third. Foul ball to Guerrero. Strike one count. And Milwaukee going into Yankee Stadium caught up. Strong pitching by Vukovic and relief efforts by Easterly Slayton McClure and Fingers, who came in to get the last out, with runners on at first and third in the ninth inning. 
Russell pitched well, but was a loser, two to one. One strike count to Garner. Here's the pitch. Back ball a little low. One ball and one strike. Fernando Valenzuela captured four individual National League pitching titles. Shutouts with eight. Complete games 11. Innings pitched 182. And strikeouts with 180. Now the 1-1 one -one pitch. Back ball. Strike call. One and two. One ball and two strikes. a gray overcast evening here. Lights are on, taking some effect. Garner looks at strike three called. He's out of there. He knew it and walked away. So Fernando had him looking for the screw ball and gave him a ball instead. Here's Tony Scott coming up, the center fielder. Scott a 264 regular season average, two for 13 in the playoffs, and he got a run batted in big one in the first game on a pop fly in the right center field. Guerrero lays in a third. Did Scott think about trying to lay one down? Here's the pitch. Back ball to strike. Owen West. The Dodgers hoping their young star, Fernando Valenzuela, will keep them alive and lead them onward. Here's the 0-1 pitch. Screw ball, top foul, strike two at the plate. What was the biblical quotation about, and a little child shall lead them? So Fernando, the youngest of the Dodgers, trying to lead them to victory. Against the veteran Houston ball club. 0-2 oh, count. Scott waiting. Pitch on the way. Struck him out. Two ball gets Scott. Scott retired on. In order. Astros out one, two, three, and we'll go to the bottom of the first with a score. Dodgers coming up. Nothing, nothing. Well, the Oakland A's, after sweeping the defending American League champion Kansas City Royals, now have the luxury of three days off while waiting to see who their opponent will be in the American League Championship Series. And from Billy Martin on down, it doesn't seem to make any difference whether it'll be the Yankees or the Brewers. Martin says the A's have no preference who we play. That's the way his club is playing now. He thinks the A's can beat just about anybody. Pitching coach Art Fowler did say, however, that he hopes the American League Eastern Division Series goes five games. That would make the A's pitching staff a little fresher for the championship series, which starts on Tuesday in either New York or Milwaukee. Mike Norris, Steve McKenney, and Rick Langford beat the Royals, and chances are the same. Three will pitch for first three games of the championship series. That would leave Matt Keogh to pitch the fourth game, and then Martin could come back with Norris should a fifth game be necessary. In auto racing, Darrell Waltrip will start from the pole position for Sunday's National 500 stock car race at Charlotte Motor Speedway, where he hopes to continue his run toward the NASCAR driving championship. Let's pause now for station identification. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Okay, now it's Vern Rule's turn. Veteran right-hander on the mound. Rule, who had his career almost ended by a disc problem and a back operation a couple of years ago, made a speedy recovery and came back to go again. Vern Rule, 30-year-old right-hander, breaking pitches, good control, and a good idea of what he's doing out there. So Rule, who is out of Coleman, Michigan, moved into the regular five-man rotation last June with the Astros. You might recall he suffered a freak accident last year here in the playoffs, or just before the playoffs, really, and could pitch only two innings when he cut his index finger on a nail in the dugout at Dodger Stadium. He worked two innings and had to come out. And the Dodgers were on to win that game and set it into over uh, to the playoff situation. He started in the league championship series, game four against Philadelphia. Here's Davey Lopes to lead it off against Rule. The Dodgers hoping for a big start like they did yesterday against Zephyr. They scored three times in the first inning. Lopes the batter. Three for 12 in the playoffs. Swings and fouls one straight back. Strike one. Rule was signed by the Astros after being released by the Detroit Tigers during spring training of 1978. And they assigned him to Columbus and he moved to Charleston before coming to the big club in July of 1978. The 0-1 pitch, down low for a ball of the count is one and one. He was the fourth starter at the 1979 season open, but went on the disabled list in May and underwent back surgery for the removal of a disc. Delivers again, low ball two, and it is two and one. He came back in September and pitched pretty well the rest of the year. 
And last year, it was 12 and 4 with the Astros with an earned run average of 2 3 at a ground ball left side. Find it short, shoots up, throws to Cedeno, one away. So Lopes grounds out to begin the Dodger bottom of the first inning. And here's Landro at bat, hitting 251 over the year, 3 for 12 in the playoffs. And during the regular season, Kenny had two home runs against Houston. But Rule was on the scrap heap. He was with Detroit for four years. They devoted him to the minors, dispatched him to Houston, discarded him in the minors, and he came back, had the back surgery, and still made it back. So that's what you call stick to it, isn't it? The pitch to Landro, taking low and outside, ball one. One and oh, the count. One ball, no strikes. Landro at bat, Baker to follow, rules pitch to Landro, bounce foul, far into the Houston dugout, and it's one and one. The Astros packed their bags, brought them to the ballpark, but in case they lose, they can go back to the hotel. They have a charter flight to take them to Houston at such time as they go back. They're hoping it'll be tonight. The one-one pitch to Landro, curve in there, he took it, bluffing a butt, and it's one ball and two strikes. One and two. One ball, two strike count. Here's the windup in the pitch. Landro, ground ball to second base. Garner scoops up a hot one. Toast the first in time, and we have two down. Two up and two down on ground ball for the infield, and here's Baker. Make no mistake about a rule as a quality pitcher. So Verdon, who opted to use rule instead of Ryan, and he received some criticism from the media or not going with Ryan. At least there were a lot of raised eyebrows about it, but Rule feels, rather, Vernon feels that Rule is a very quality pitcher, and it's not really a gamble. He's pitching him in turn. If Sutton were able to pitch, it would be Sutton probably pitching. But Rule was into the rotation in Sutton's spot. So Vernon Rule ready to go to Dusty Baker. Dusty three for 12 in the playoffs. And Baker yesterday had a double and a single. Drove in a run in the first inning and scored on Garvey's home run. Two outs in the first. Drew goes down off the mound onto the grass to rub up the ball. Crowd still coming in, filling up those vacant seats so we can see, but there's one stretch, one spot in center field that apparently will not be filled. Here's the pitch on the way to Baker. Curve in there nicely for a strike. He's got a good breaking ball, does Rule. All won the count with two down in the first inning. All right, Rule taking his time to draw a sign from Louis Pujols, his catcher. The 0-1 pitch. Baker takes high with a fastball, one and one. In case you missed it in college football, USC lost and UCLA lost today. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Baker checks on a breaking ball, caught the outside corner, knee high, good pitch by Rule, one and two. Fernando set him down in the first inning, and Rule trying to duplicate that in the bottom of the first. Here's the one-two pitch. Ground ball punched to the right side, Cedeno feeds Rule in time for the out, and the Dodgers go quietly in the first. So one inning gone, and no score. In college football, South Carolina and Kentucky are tied 7-7 seven to seven in the middle of the second quarter. Looking at golf, Ben Crenshaw won a nail-biter against fellow Texan Bill Rogers in the, the semifinal of the World Match Play Golf Championship in Wentworth, England on Saturday. Crenshaw needed a birdie on the final hole of the 36-hole match. After Rogers, the reigning British Open champion, squared the match by winning the previous two holes. It was sweet revenge for Crenshaw, who only last Sunday lost a sudden death play after Rogers in the Texas Open in San Antonio. And the other semifinals, Spain's Seve Ballesteros overwhelmed West Germany's Bernard Langer 5-4. and four. Payne Stewart made the turn in Saturday's third round of the $200,000 Southern Open Golf Tournament with a one-stroke lead over Gary McCord. Stewart began the day with a three-stroke lead at eight under, and he made the turn at nine under, but McCord sank five birdies through ten holes to go to eight under. Veterans Calvin Pete and J.C. Sneed were two shots further back at six under, while Jerry Pate lost three strokes to par on the front nine, making the turn at two under for the tournament. Bjorn Borg used his superb passing game to cruise past V.J. Amritraj, 6-4, 6-4, and advance. Two and one to count. 
No score, second inning. Both sides out in order in the first. Fastball, strike called on the inside corner. Cruz backing out of there. Ball at the inside corner. Two and two the count. Once again, Fernando checking signs into the windup, and here's the pitch. Just missed the outside corner with a breaking ball. Cruz was leaning for it and held up. And Plato Pyre McSherry said, no, it just missed. So Fernando very close to getting Cruz. Cruz had a good eye to hold up, saw the ball was breaking. Now the 3-2 pitch on the way. Fly ball to left field. Baker near the line. He's there. And that's one away. So Cruz, a fly ball to left, and Cedeno will be the batter. Cedeno, a 271 average during the regular year. He has two hits and 11 at bats in the playoffs. He got the two hits in the first game. One away in the second. As Fernando tried to get a win for the first time since September the 17th. Cucci a strike to Sereno on one. Oh one count. Once again, Fernando into the windup and the 0 one pitch. Fastball, strike two, called to Sereno. He had to be looking for something else. He got a screwball on a fastball. Now we'll see what the Dodgers do with him. He backs out to rub a little dirt in his hands, trying to think things over. Takes a practice swing and climbs back in there. 0 oh, and 2 as Fernando sets. Here's the pitch. Bouncing ball to shortstop. Russell waits for a hop. Here's his throw. It is in time to get Fernando to go away. Two up and two down with Art Howe, the, left, the third baseman coming up. Hit a home run to left field last night in the third inning. That was the only run the Astros were able to accumulate. Art Howe's home run to left field. So two away, Howe at bat, and Dickie Son is out on deck. Okay, Howe not quite ready. into the batter's box. The wind up and the pitch on the way to Howe. Strike call. So Fernando starting him off with strike most of the time. Doesn't seem like too long ago that Fernando was out there on the mound opening the season against the Astros. Back in April. You remember how that came about, don't you? That Jerry Royce was due to pitch and suffered an injury before the season began and couldn't. Gave way to Fernando and that opened the door and Fernando really walked right through it. Now 1-1 one, one pitch to Howe. Scrucci is low for ball. 2-2-1. Two, two and one. He started off back there on April the 9th with a complete game 2 to nothing 5-hitter against the Astros before 50,000 fans at Dodger Stadium. 2-1. and one. And the pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. Through ball. That one really dipped down and Howe chased it. Two balls and two strikes. trying to keep the Dodgers season alive. Now the 2-2 pitch on the way to Howe. Bouncing ball near second base. Lopes up with it. Here's his play. He got him. Three up and three down. We'll go to the bottom of the second. For the score, Astros nothing, Dodgers nothing. Checking college football at halftime, Tennessee Chattanooga leads Marshall 14 to nothing. John Henry and jockey Bill Shoemaker combined Saturday to make the six-year-old gelding the richest horse in history, taking a win by a head at the Jockey Gold Cup at Belmont Park in New York. The win over Pete Moss virtually guarantees John Henry Horse of the Year honors, his major competitor for the Eclipse Award, Pleasant Colony, was scratched from the Gold Cup race and retired after suffering an injury this week. The win at his 340,800 pot puts John Henry's winning at more than 2800000 bucks now, surpassing earnings of spectacular bid. John Henry, the three-to-one co-favorite, covered the one-and-a-half-mile course in 2.28 and two-fifths. That's just one and a fifth seconds off the record set by Exceller in 1978. Ikizato broke into the early lead with Amber Pass still summing <laughs> until rather summing. This year's Belmont Stakes winner took over the front position as the field headed toward the third turn. 
home run in the tenth inning by George Vukovic. Beat Montreal to even that series at Philadelphia. Six to five. Sanderson, Bronson, Sosa, Fryman, and Reardon for Montreal. Knowles, Brewster, Lyle, Reed, McGraw going for Philadelphia. Home run Carter, Swift, Matthews, and Vukovic. Tomorrow, Rogers and Carlton in a game that begins at 1 o'clock Los Angeles time. And Milwaukee beat the Yankees to even it up. Final score there, 2-1. to one. And, of course, Oakland is sitting around waiting to see what happens there. They're all through for a while. There's Garvey at bat, 4 out of 12 in the playoffs, and two home runs. So Garvey has definitely been the Dodger offensive star. 283 batting average on the full year. So Garvey now to go against Rule. The lights have not taken effect as yet. It's a little bit twilight time here. And it might be a little bit hard to pick up the ball. The pitch on the way to Garvey. Ground ball, shortstop. Fine. Swings it across in time. One away. So Garvey, first ball hitting. Grounds to short. That'll bring on Rick Lundy. Rick, two for nine in the playoffs. And a 315 average overall. So Lundy is the batter. Now they swing the outfield around to the right a bit. They have Poole in right field. Scott in center. And Cruz in left. The infield also moves around a bit. Now gets Lundy, a left-hand power hitter. Now at third is wide of the bag, but he's up even with the grass. Bond shades towards second base, and Garner backs up deep in the middle on the right side with Cedeno well off the line on the first base side. So Lundy at bat, one away in the second. Guerrero on deck, and so should have followed. Veteran right-hander Vern Rule. Here's the windup and the pitch. Fly ball to left field and it's hit deep. Cruz a long way to go for it down in the corner. That's the warning track to make the catch for the out. So Monday going the opposite way and they had the outfield shifted way around and Cruz made a long run for that ball, caught it right in front of the box seat down in the left field corner just beyond the bullpen gate. So Monday along out to left field and here's Guerrero at bat. Guerrero 2 for 11. Felt like he lost a couple of home runs on long drives in the Dome in the first two games of the series. Pedro, a 300 hitter for the year. And Rule now ready to work to him here in the second. Two down, nobody on. The pitch to Pedro, curve strike. Well, he's got a good breaking ball. Very Rule, 30-year-old right-hander. Owen won the count, now the pitch. Swing and a miss at a good fastball. 0-2 to Guerrero. Jumped out of his shoes going after that one. Nothing in two with uh, two outs. Rule checking signs. Astros lead in games 2-1. to one. Dodgers trying to square off. Best of five. The pitch to Guerrero high for ball one and two. One ball and two strikes. Sochi is on deck with Russell to follow. Now the one-two pitch. Foul back. Hand him with a fastball, and he got just a piece of it, fouled it into the screen. Seats are filling up now. The crowd is late arriving. Coming in tomorrow's game, if there is a tomorrow, is 105. One ball, two strikes to Pedro. Brule takes off sign, now delivered. Breaking ball, grounded a third. How there, up with it. Here's his throw to Cedeno, and the side retired one, two, three. Oh, in two innings, we haven't had a base runner by either side. The score going to the third, nothing, nothing. In college football, in the middle of the first quarter, Eastern Kentucky leads Tennessee State by seven to nothing. The Arizona locker room was like a New Year's Eve party, while the Southern California locker room resembled a funeral. Following the Wildcats' stunning 13-10 upset of the top-ranked Trojans on Saturday, leading the cheers in the raucous Arizona dressing room was quarterback Tom Tenecliffe, who shredded the Southern Cal defense for 293 yards and a touchdown. They played very good, but we played better, said Tony a sophomore. I don't know if they were cocky, but we played the number one team in the country, and we had nothing to lose. No one expected us to win. We're good enough to play with anyone. USC is a great team, but today we were good enough to beat them. Leading the morning, the morning M-O-U-R-N, in Southern Cal dressing room was Coach John Robinson. That was one of the worst defensive performances I've ever seen as a coach, he said. We were beaten by a club that played better football in every phase of the game. Perhaps we underestimated Arizona. 
They outplayed us and outcoached us. What surprised me was the inefficiency of our offense to move the ball around. We turned the ball over four times. We kept killing ourselves. We learned today that we're not good enough to play without emotion and still win. Arizona coach Larry Smith was as happy as his players were, but seemed shocked by their performance. He said, I told the kids all week there's only one, there's only that much difference, rather, between the top team and all the rest. When Fernando and Nolan Ryan locked up on Tuesday down in the Astrodome, it was a scoreless game until the bottom of the sixth inning. The Astros had had two hits up until then, and the Dodgers had had one. And in the bottom of the sixth inning, a single by Poole and a walk to Garner, a pop fly single by Scott, picked up a run, and that came after two rounds in that sixth inning. And then the Astros picked up two more runs in the ninth inning, and those came off relief pitcher Dave Stewart, the home run by Ashby, and the single by Reynolds. Here's Dickie Fon coming on. Fon was born in South Bend, Indiana but grew up in Puerto Rico near San Juan. His dad was a Winter League manager, and he still makes his home there, does Don, in Puerto Rico. Checks on the screwball, strike one. American born in the United States, and he grew up in Puerto Rico. He played winter ball last year for Steve Howe's team, managing in Puerto Rico. Scrooge, strike two, call. All two to Don. Don was with the Angels last year, and he was part of the deal that involved Ken Force looking young shortstop played in the minors for the last several years lines one foul got a breaking ball in around the knees and he pulled his foul third base way strike two to Dick the Astros are high on him they like the way he plays here's the 0-2 pitch high and away one and two he is two for five in the playoffs five for 18 on the year against the Dodgers the one-two pitch on the way, outside and high. This is his second start. Garcia started the first game, Fon the second game, Reynolds yesterday, and now it's Fon tonight. Two and two. Here's the pitch. Crew ball and popped up foul off first base. Garvey has a play. Over near the auxiliary boxes and has it to the out. So Fon fouls out. One away, the batter will be Lewis Pujols, the catcher. Pujols, 0 for 3 in the playoffs, 239 average during the regular season. So Pujols coming up. No score, not a base runner. We've had everybody retired so far. These two teams, of course, feature outstanding pitching. And that's all we've seen in this series, outstanding pitching. Even though the Dodgers got six runs yesterday, they got three in the first and three in the ninth. One out, Pujols, a right-hand batter. Even though Ashby's a switch hitter, Verdon elected to go with Pujols tonight. Two balls, chase and miss, strike one. Fernando ready again to pitch the pool. Fastball lined away foul out of play. Oh, and two. The figures do not give any reason why he would figure two holes over Ashby because Ashby is a right hand batter and hit 300. Ball this and 40 at bat. Oh, two count the pool hole. And the pitch on the way. Ground ball to third, near the bag. Up with it, Carrera. Long throw. Got him. Carrera had to back up to get a hop on the third baseline, but he had the arm to do it. We have two down, and here's the pitcher, Vern Rule, coming up. Vern Rule. R-U-H-L-E. Vern Rule. He's a right-handed batter. Looks like it's going to rain, but the weatherman says, no, it's just a cloudy evening. Coming into twilight time. All right, there are two outs. Rule the batter. We haven't had a base runner yet. Here's the pitch. Strike on a fastball, 0-1. So Fernando and Rule have been perfect up to this point. Now the 0-1 pitch on the way. Curve, his bat foul away, strike two. 
Rule has a hitter on the year. Six for 24. Three runs batted in. The 0-2 pitch took him out. Bad retired. So Fernando gets his third strikeout. And he has retired nine in a row. And the score going to the bottom of the third. Nothing and nothing. Looking at some of the games around the nation, Herschel Walker minced the old Miss defense for 265 yards, his biggest output of the season to face the ninth-ranked Bulldogs to a 37-7 victory over Mississippi. Georgia took the lead for keeps early in the second quarter when Walker made a six-yard touchdown run through the Mississippi line, wrapping up a 64-yard 14-play drive. That was all, that was the All-American tailback's only touchdown and 41 carries. Injury play quarterback John Forcade was lost to the Rebels in the second quarter with a rib separation as he scored Ole Miss's only touchdown on a seven-yard run. Georgia up its mark to four and one. The Rebels are three and three. Sophomore quarterback Steve Smith scored two touchdowns and senior tailback Bush Wolfolk became the first Michigan runner to gain 200 yards in a game since 1975 to lead the sixth-ranked Wolverines to a 38-20 victory over Michigan State. The Spartans have a 20-16 lead with 17 minutes left in the game. Spartan quarterback Brian Cart passed for 316 yards. Great roll goes to the mound now. The Dodgers come to bat with Sosha, Russell, and Fernando here in the bottom of the third inning with no score, no base runners. Here at twilight time at Dodger Stadium. This afternoon, the York and the Milwaukee Brewers. The Brewers winning a 2-1 at Yankee Stadium with Vukovic beating Russell. And Philadelphia getting a home run by George Vukovic. No relation to Pete. In the bottom of the tenth inning at Philadelphia to win. 6-5 over Montreal. So the Dodgers time try to stay afloat. Start off with Sosha. With 1-7 in the playoffs. 2-3 for three during the full year against the Astros. Hit a couple of long ones in the dome, but only long outs down there. Sosha with two home runs, 29 RBIs during the regular season. So here's Frank now to face Rule. He turns around to check his defense to the lineman before he gets set to make his first pick. He wants Fidenio to back up a little bit at first, at first base. Okay, ready to go. Sosha stands in. Now trying to make a little noise and hate the Dodgers on. Here's the pitch to Sosha. Bust the third base play. Rule can't An excellent try by Sosa, even though he's not the fastest of runners. He had him way in back, and he got it past okay. the pitcher, but how came there in, made a big league barehand play, and got it. So Sosa out on a punt try, and how made a, an excellent play on it. Here's Billy Russell at bat. Billy is one for nine in the playoffs. Well, that was heads up by Sosa to give it a try, and heads up by how to make a big league play. Here's the look in the pitch. Russell takes low for a ball. Once Sosha got the bunt past the pitcher rule, it looked like he might have it beat. But Al made a good play at bare hands. The 1-0 pitch to Billy. Breaking ball is a strike, and it's 1-1. One one. The rule in Valenzuela starting out, dominating the hitters here this evening. One ball, one strike, one out. The pitch to Russell. Fly ball into left field, playable. Two's up a few steps. He's waiting for it now. And that's two away. Eight in a row retired by rule. And here's Fernando coming on now. Fernando coming up. Trying to get something going. We're two down in the third. The Dodgers and the Astros. Zero, zero. to Fernando, a pretty good hitter. The Dodgers' leading hitter among the pitchers takes one low and inside, ball one. One row of the count. Brule checking, reads the signs of Louis Brule's catcher, and the 1 0 pitch. Taps up the first baseline, and it's going to roll the rule, makes the play in time, and the side is retired. Balance with a taps out pitcher to first. And the Dodgers go one, two, three, and both sides have gone three up and three down for three innings. We'll also be here with more play in the fourth with a score. 
Nothing is nothing. Can the peace continue? Yes, David Leslie, Egypt President Saddam Hussein today is a tomb of the unknown soldier who does about 30 in Cairo. Because of the tight security, only 800 mourners were allowed to walk behind Saddam's funeral cortege. Israel Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the funeral is being organized by Saddam Hussein's family. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu says the
Mike and Warren. They have forced the fifth game of the Eastern Division Mini Series tomorrow with Montreal. Scott swings and misses an off three pitch from Fernando on one. Phillies blew a four nothing lead they built after three this afternoon. But in the bottom of the tenth, George Vukovic hit a pinch homer to win it for Philly. Uh, Jeff Reardon, who's got everybody to face him in that game until Vukovic came up. Scott steps it foul back of the plate, 0 and 2. Doug McGraw got the win over Reardon. Each club used five pitchers today at the vet. Mike Schmidt and Gary Matthews also homers for Philadelphia. Gary Carter hit one for Montreal. Fernando Reddy in the two strike picks to Scott. Swung on and missed strike three as he reached across the plate for his through ball and didn't get it. Four strikeouts for Valenzuela. For four innings, he's been perfect. He's retired 12 Astros in succession. And at the end of three and a half innings, still no score. In football, Kurt Warner rushed for 105 yards and two touchdowns, and Mike Mead rushed for 107 yards and another score to power second-ranked Penn State to a 38-7 victory over outman Boston College. Warner scored on runs of seven yards and one yard and gained 100 yards for the fifth straight time. Junior quarterback Todd Blackledge passed for a career-high 182 yards, including a 39-yard scoring bomb to Kenny Jackson. Boston College became the first team to score in Beaver Stadium in three games of this season. Sophomore Tyrone Anthony ran for two touchdowns in his first game since filling in for injured tailback Kevin Bryant to spark fifth-ranked North Carolina to a 48-10 win over Wake Forest. Tight end Shelton Robinson grabbed the first two scoring passes of his career from quarterback Rod Elkin. In 26 carries, Anthony totaled 224 yards, the fifth best rushing performance in Tar Heel history. The crowd of nearly 52,000 watched Anthony score on runs of 30 and two yards in the second half. We've seen 21 batters come to the plate thus far in the ball game, and 21 have gone down. Fernando's retired 12 Astros in a row. Vern Rule has put down all nine Dodgers to face him. And so you couldn't see any better pitching than we've seen so far. No score. Bottom of the fourth inning. Davey loves Ken Landro and Dusty Baker coming up for the Dodgers. Lope hit one of those seven ground balls that Vern Rule has up thus far. In the first inning, he hit at the shortstop, Dickie Thon, who was thrown out. The only Dodger who came close to it was Rick Mundy, and he, he didn't come that close, but he had a fly ball to left field in front of the bullpen gate, and Jose Cruz had to come a long way from left center field. But it was high enough that he was able to get there. Crowd coming alive at Dodger Stadium, a sellout on this Saturday night. Hoping the Dodgers can tie the series with the Astros. Rule Ray in the first one to Lope. Breaking ball popped up over near the Houston dugout. Coming over to Daniel, it's doubtful, and it's back in about five rows. And then Ricochet's back onto the field, and catcher Louis Pujols will pick it up. 0-1 to Davey Wolf. In case you missed it, the Milwaukee Brewers beat the Yankees tonight in New York, 2-1. to Raleigh Fingers struck out Rick Cerrone with the tying run at third base for the final out to save it for Pete Vukovic. The Brewers used five pitchers. Marshall took the loss. Milwaukee with only four hits, the Yankees with five. So they're all even in their American League East for these series. With the decisive game tomorrow night at Yankee Stadium, sitting Ron Gittery against Moose Hawes. Close back in waiting. All in one account. Rule, the man the Astros call the best number five starter in baseball, delivers and a step in to Davy Ball one. New York tonight, 52,077. They had 38,818 this afternoon in Philadelphia. Wolf hit one off the end of that foul, back of the plate, one and two. You know, the Dodgers have not supported Fernando recently with much offense. In his last three games, they've backed him with a total of just two runs. And in his last five starts, the Dodgers have tallied only six runs for him. No score tonight in the fourth. Here's Vernon Earl's one-two pitch. Ground ball to second. Bill Garner high up. He's got it. Throws and got him. That was almost kangaroo over Garner's head. And now Cedeno gives it back to him on the relay for the infield practice. He dropped it. But he didn't drop it when he had to make the play, and he got low. So one out of the Dodger fourth. Ten in a row. He's tied by Rule. Here's Ken Landro. Two fellows back in the what, 1919, Hippo Vaughn and Jim Tony. 
Double no hitters for nine. Some show so far tonight by Valenzuela and Rule here at Dodger Stadium. Pressure packed game. The Dodgers have to win or the season is over. Landro rolled the Garner's first time and he's the third round ball to fill this time. And there's two away in the Dodgers' fourth inning. The rule is on his game. He's faced 11. And he's got nine of them and ground balls to his infielder. Dusty Baker went the other way and bounced out to first baseman Zidane on the opening and the rule came over to cover. And they got Baker. Zeros up on the scoreboard for both sides. Michigan, looking down to Louis Pujols. Now into the windup with the first pitch to Baker. A fly ball to center, stuck there, going back and makes the catch. The rule, like Valenzuela, has retired 12 in a row. We go to the fifth inning, no score. These halftime college football scores, Kentucky is tied with South Carolina, 7-7. Seven to seven. Jackson State leads Florida A&M 14-6. Then again, and again, these are halftime scores. Louisiana leads Lamar 7-zip. Well, looking at auto racing, Gary Barlow captured the late model Sportsman 300 mile race at Charlotte Motor Speedway Saturday, crossing the finish line about 10 car lengths ahead of Mark Martin. Ricky Rudd finished third, and NASCAR Grand National points leader Darrell Waltrip took fourth, limping across the finish line in his Camaro after falling out of contention with engine problems in the second turn. Contention with engine problems in the second turn of the final lap. Middle averaged 135.678 miles an hour and led the final 23 laps. In football, Cliff Austin ran for two touchdowns to lead 10th-ranked Clemson to a 27 to nothing Atlantic Coast Conference victory over Virginia. Austin was the game's leading rusher with 89 yards on 14 carries. Clemson quarterback Homer Jordan completed nine passes for 161 yards. Austin scooted 43 yards for his first touchdown. Clemson also scored on a short run by fullback Jeff McCall. Cavaliers threatened with five minutes to play when they marched 74 yards in 12 plays to the Clemson five-yard line. But the defense sacked quarterback Gordy Whitehead on second down and forced incomplete passes on third and fourth down. Fifth inning we go at Dodger Stadium in what has been a pitching masterpiece up to here. Not only no score at the end of the four, no runners for either club. The Dodgers and the Astros. Twelve in a row retired by both Fernando Valenzuela and Vern Rule. And to the fifth inning with Jose Cruz, Cesar Cedeno, and Art Howe coming up for the Astros. Cruz in a fly ball to Baker his first time up. One of only two balls that's gone out of the infield tonight off Valenzuela. Rule had the other, the fly ball to Landro in the fourth inning. Fernando looking down to Socia. Now building to the windup of the first pitch of the fifth inning. He is foul. Straight back of the play. That's why he got a piece of play done by John McSherry. You talk about clutch pitching. We have seen it so far tonight. Already in the one strike fix the Cruz. Swung on and missed. So and two. Fernando, who led the major leagues in strikeouts this year with 180 during the regular season, has four tonight. He's 0 2 to Jose Cruz. Good spray hitter. 0 2 pitch. Fastball just outside. 1 and 2. He's got it. Coach 
Bradshaw was halfway back to the backstop when he garnered Cruz's foul ball. One away, and here's Pete Arcevino, who bounced to short his first time up. The Dodgers trying to make it 13 wins in the last 15 starts against the Astros at Dodger Stadium. But they've got their hands full tonight with Ron Rule. And waiting in case he has to go tomorrow in the deciding game, Nolan Ryan. Jerry Royce would pitch game five for the Dodgers tomorrow afternoon on three days rest. Fernando working on three days rest tonight. The first pitch to Cedeno. Fastball. Did he go too far around? Yes, says the first base umpire, Lee Wire. Strike one. John McCurry asked for help. Cedeno's had the most success of any Astro against Fernando this year with six hits. Six for 14. Than with Houston longer than anybody since 1970. Swings and this is a true ball. Strike two on two. Fernando's done very well in the games he's pitched this year with three days rest. Current run average in those games is under 1.3. Two strike pitch to Cedeno. Whooped over short to left field. Baker coming up. It'll fall. And it is the first runner of the game. He's under Cedeno. Parking one in the shallow left field. With one out here in the fifth inning. So we won't have a double perfect game. And the Astros will try to convert here in the fifth inning. Art Howe coming up. Howe rather the second, his first time up. No score. Fernando had retired 13 in a row as Joe Cedeno moved one to left. Has retired all 12 Dodgers to face him. Art Howe waiting at the plate from the right side. Fernando will go to first, then back easily is Cedeno. As you know, Cedeno was troubled in the last few weeks of the regular season with a pulled hamstring muscle. In fact, he was out for about a week. He got a good lead and he was leaning the wrong way, and the pitch of the plate is low on inside. Cedeno took a step towards second. And as Fernando released the ball, he was going back to first. Fernando picked Art Howe off first base in the first playoff game Tuesday night at the Astrodome. All right, the stretch by Fernando. Again, he'll go over to first, and Cedeno back easily. Cedeno has a base shooter this year. It's 12 for 19. Showed the Dodgers in Houston he wasn't afraid to run, bad leg or not. Another move to first. Fernando had a little more on that one. But Sam is all Cedeno back on the bag. Garvey holding the bag on Cedeno to the right side of the infield open. See if Burton puts the play on. Sounds well again goes to first. And again, Cedeno hops back on the bag. Cedeno has stolen as many as 61 bases in a season for the Astros. He has six straight years of 50 or more stolen bases. All right, the pitch to the plate. Half takes the strike, one and one. Last year, before he was hurt, Cedeno had 48 stolen bases. So that was the one that's trying to tie him up. With one out here in the fifth inning. Has asked McSherry to look at the baseball, and he'll put a new one in play by way of Socio. When the Dodgers come up in the bottom of the fifth, they'll have Garvey, Mundy, and Guerrero. No score. The stretch by Fernando. Again, a lot of toss over to Garvey. It looked like a blooper pitch. on a 3-2 pitch, fouled out back of the plate to Socia. Cedeno, then at a trump line drive at the left field for a single. The count to Art Howe, 1-1. One one. Valenzuela out of a stretch. And the pitch out, Cedeno was going back to first base. And two balls and one strike to Art Howe. So Cedeno not doing so far a very effective job of reading Valenzuela's move. And both of these pitchers tonight, Valenzuela and Rule, a lot of time in the course of the game throwing the first base. They like to hold the runners on. All right, the stretch by Fernando. 
This time he goes to first, and he's our back. On deck for the Astro, shortstop Dickie Thon. The count to third base in our half, two balls and a strike with one out. Here's the stretch by Valenzuela. He's got it picked off. Throw to Garvey. Down to Russell. They got him. So Daniel is on his stomach, not getting up at second base. First base coach Bobby Lillis and Houston trainer Don Tiger are the first men out there. So Daniel might have hurt himself, died it in the second. He went in head first to try to elude Russell's tag. Harley made an accurate throw. And so Valenzuela picks the Daniel off just as he did Howard Houston. And they are feeling the back of his right leg. And it might be that hamstring muscle as his father sees are the last couple of weeks. Maybe it's a cramp. He's now trying to get up with the assistance of the third base coach, Don Leppard, and Tiger. Cesar's in great pain, and I don't know whether he can continue or not. But Fernando kept throwing over there, and finally he got to Daniel Lini. Garvey, who's had trouble throwing that ball to second base, made his second straight accurate throw of the series to Russell, and they got to Daniel. But to Daniel is having to use the trainer, and I think Bobby Lillis, to help him off the field. And it's very doubtful now that Daniel can continue in this game. is hanging as it comes as he comes into the Houston dugout and the Daniel being helped down the step and he'll take a seat on the Astro bench but you'd have to guess that the Daniel is through for tonight and of course that becomes a big big question mark for Houston if this game winds up enforcing the fifth game tomorrow Al takes a strike and it's two and two so two away now with the bases empty Valenzuela helps himself by nailing Cesar Cedeno. Two and two to Art Howe. Fernando the lined up in the pitch. Through ball, bounce to the left side. Guerrero's got a play to Garvey in time. No runs, one hit. Nobody left. Through five innings, Fernando Valenzuela has faced a minimum of 15 batters. But at the end of four and a half innings, Dodgers nothing, Astros nothing. Looking at college football scores early in the second quarter, Southern Illinois leads West Texas State 6-7. In the middle of the second quarter, Texas Tech leads Arkansas 7-6. Vanderbilt and Tulane, no score in the middle of the second quarter. Still in the middle of the second. Eastern Kentucky leads Middle Tennessee State 14 to nothing. McNeese State leads Louisiana, Northwest Louisiana, 13 to 7 in the middle of the second. At the end of the first quarter, Southern U trails Nichols State by 7 to 13. Nichols State, 13. SMU, 6. Baylor, 3. That's late in the first quarter. At the end of the first quarter, TCU leads Rice, 7 to nothing. Sam King's 20-yard touchdown pass to Jim Sandusky with 19 seconds remaining gave Nevada Las Vegas a 45-41 upset of 8th ranked Brigham Young. Cesar Cadeno has had to leave the ball game. Denny Walling replaces him at first base for the Astros. Cadeno was using a bat as a cane as he made his way to the near end of the Astro dugout and down the steps and back to the clubhouse. So that is a shame because the Astros lose the senior member of their cast, a fellow who's been with them now for 11 years, one of their great offensive sparks, Cesar Cedeno. But Denny Wally, a left-handed hitter, has to be pressed into service here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Steve Garvey will lead off for the Dodgers, who have yet to get a base runner against Vern Rule. No score. He'll be followed by Rick Mundy and Pedro Guerrero. We've gotten to the halfway point of this game in less than an hour. It has been a dandy. Valenzuela and Rule have been brilliant. Garvey grounded a short. He first time up. Now trying to rouse the Dodgers in the fifth inning. The first one to Garvey. Taken high for a ball. 
has his customary in a grand rule pitch game. Not many strikeouts, not many walks. He has neither so far tonight. But he's gotten every Dodger to face him. The 1-0 pitch. Darby fouls on the screen. One and one. Pressure on the plate umpire in a close game like this. Big John McSherry. Now ask for time for Garvey. Looks like he's got something in his eye. So a rule wait to count one ball and one strike. Capacity crowd at Dodger Stadium. Hoping the Dodgers can level this series and force the fifth in the signing game tomorrow. Through over the windup and the 1-1 pitch to Garvey. Pop up back a shortstop into shallow off field. Jose Cruz calling for it. He's got it one away. That's 13 in a row retired by Vern Rule. The same Vern Rule has beaten the Dodgers only once since he came to the National League. They've beaten him four times. They've beaten him twice this year. But tonight, he has been perfect for four and a third inning. Here's Rick Monday who lifted a fly ball to the warning track in left field his first time up. Rule's career run run average against the Dodgers, for instance, is three and a half. But tonight, they've done nothing against him so far. A lot of people question Bill Burton's selection of Vernon Rule in game four. The critics feeling that Owen Ryan would have been a better bet, especially if this were a twilight game. But there was no sun, so no twilight problems. And Vernon Rule been to burn. The first one to Rick Monday. Foul back. Real noted as a curveball pitcher. And the people in Houston who have seen him work the last couple of years said the real seems to come up with his better game on natural grass fields down on artificial surfaces simply because he's got to throw a lot of ground balls during the game. That's not too good if you're working on the carpet all the time. walk to the Dodgers this year. And he's in his 19th inning against them. He's 0-1 to Rick Monday. Batting from the left side of the bottom of the fifth. No score. The pitch. Checked his swing. It's high. 1-1. One one. As soon as we get a report on Cesar Cedeno, we'll pass it along to you. He has gone back to the Houston clubhouse. And Denny Walling has replaced him at first base for the Astros. It appeared to be in the Back of your right leg, but we'll wait and see. The so one one pitch to Monday. Popped up out of play again. One and two. No score. Bottom of the fifth inning. The Dodgers looking for their first base runner of the game against Vern Rule. A man the Detroit Tigers cut loose three years ago. taking his time, climbing back in from the left side. Now he's ready. Rule, looking down to Pujols. Okay, is the side. And here's the one-two pitch. Foul back again. Rule made a tremendous comeback in 1979 from back surgery. He had a disc removed and late May that year, and by September of the same season, he was back on the mound and pitched a four-hit shutout over the Giants. All right, he's set. The one-two pitch is high to Monday, two and two. As we surmise, to Daniel Paul, that right hamstring muscle. That's the report from downstairs. So the Astros concerned about their former all-star outfielder, Cesar Cedeno. Monday with one out and nobody on in the bottom of the fifth. Burn rule to the windup. Here's the pitch. High ball three. Monday started to go hell back. So a rarity in this game, a 3-2 count for Burn Rule. On deck, Pedro Guerrero. No score. We're in the fifth. One hit in the game. Daniel had it, was picked on first. Pulled his hamstring muscle, trying to get the second. Payoff pitch to Rick Monday. Here it is. Strike three calls. D.I. and John McCherry calls him out, and Monday walks away. 
without saying a word. So a money pitch by Ron Rule. That was a great spot. And Monday caught lucky. First strike out of the night for Rule. Two away, and here's Pedro Guerrero. Guerrero grounded the third, his first time up. That's only the seventh Dodger Rule has struck out this year. And remember, he has been in four games against them. There's a drive by Guerrero. Left field of the deep. It's gone. Dickie's on, with Luis Pujols and Vern Rule to follow in the top of the sixth inning. One run, 
One hit for the Dodgers. No runs, one hit for the Astros. Must game for the Dodgers. Guerrero has given them the lead. The pitch is on. Outside, ball three, three and one. So Fernando in danger of walking his first man. Three balls and a strike. The Dickie Thon out of Puerto Rico. Obtained in the deal for Ken Porsche in April. The 3-1 pitch is low ball four. The Astros have the time on the board to lead off the sixth inning. That'll bring on Louis Pujol. We'll see how the Astros play it. Rue will do up next, and then Terry Poole after that. Pujol watching Don Leopard, his third base coach, closely as he walks to the plate. So a leadoff walk in the sixth inning. Takes his lead. Pujols not ready to stand in yet. Not a pretty good base runner. He's six for seven when he's attempted to steal. Fernando looks at him and goes to Garvey and gone back. A two-out homer by Pete Guerrero in the bottom of the fifth is put to the Dodgers to the lead. Don aboard on a walk. The stretch by Valenzuela. The first one to two holes. He's swinging and wants to fly ball to left center. Landro going back, indicating he's got it. He's under it and makes the catch. One out. So Bill Verne with his pitcher coming up next. Just deigned the sacrifice and let two holes swing away. One out. Here's Peru. And now you look for the bunt. Peru struck out swinging his first time up. However, I can tell you this. Rule is not an ordinary hitting pitcher. He's a pretty good hitting pitcher. He's batting 250 this year for Houston. Guerrero thinks he's going to be bunting. Pete is already in on the grass at third. Garvey holding Thon on. And Valenzuela looking down the barrel. Threw around a bunt. Bunt in the air. They're good bunt. Field by Fernando over to Lopes covering. And on the sacrifice, down the second goes Dickie Thon. The rule was up there to sacrifice, and he did it nicely. One to four in the put out. Two away in the Astros sixth inning. And Terry Poole will now try to get Thon home and even it up. Poole is 0 for 2. Checked his swing to open the game and roll up the third baseline. Mike Soch went out and got it and threw him out. And the last time up in the fourth inning, Poole fly to Landro in center. One, nothing Dodgers. Fernando retired the first 13 Astros tonight. Ron Rule got the first 14 Dodgers. And then Guerrero hammered the home run to left with two away in the fifth inning. Stretch by Valenzuela. The left-handed hitting pool waiting for the pitch to him. He's outside for a ball. If there's a fifth game tomorrow, we'll be on the air at 12.45. Jerry Rice against Nolan Ryan. Nine with a good lead off of second base. Pool waiting. Valenzuela out of the stretch. And the 1-0 pitch. Ball two. Socio off the throw, but nobody was covering the second. Fernando crouched down, not knowing that a Dodger infielder had not gotten in behind him. But no play. 2-0 to Terry Poole. Bill Garner would be next. When the Dodgers hit in the bottom of the six, they'll have Russell, Valenzuela, and Wolfs. The stretch by Fernando. The 2-0 pitch to Poole. Fly ball to right. Monday should get it. And Fernando is out of the inning. Astros leave their first runner of the evening. At the end of five and a half innings, Dodgers won, Astros nothing. In college football, in the middle of the second quarter, TCU is leading Rice 14 to 6. Late in the second quarter, Arkansas leads Texas Tech 16 to 7. Running back Dylan Nelson kept a brilliant performance with a two-yard touchdown dive with 46 seconds left, carrying Stanford to a 26-23 upset of UCLA. It was the first victory of the year for the Cardinals after four losses and dropped UCLA, the nation's 17th-ranked team, to 3-2. and two. Nelson carried the ball 24 times for 96 yards and grabbed seven passes for 74 more. UCLA up by 14-3 and three at one point. Saw Stanford whittle away at that advantage. The Bruins came back on an 83-yard 15-play drive early in the fourth quarter for a 23-19 lead. 
Then they had a chance to sew the game when Jimmy Turner intercepted a John Elway pass at the Stanford 40. The Bruin drive headed with Stanford tackle John Bergen blocking a Norm Johnson field goal attempt.
was aware of the sacrifice and walked up there one and one. Little to the stretch. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball high. Two and one. Phillies beat the Expos six to five on George Vukovich's tenth inning homer. To square that series, tomorrow Steve Carlton and Steve Rogers at Veteran Stadium. All right, the two one pitch to Davey Love. Low ball three, three and one. Milwaukee, that's New York tonight, two to one. That American way, Eastern Division mini series is all even two all. Tomorrow, Ron Gittery and Moose House at the Yankee Stadium. Oakland has already qualified for the American League Championship Series. Here in Los Angeles tonight, the Dodgers trying to deadlock the Astros in game four. They lead one, nothing in the six. Russell walking away from second, one out. Out of a stretch and a 3 1 pitch to Davey Lope. Ball four is outside. There's the first walk that Vernon Rule has doled out this year to a Dodger hitter in 20 innings of work against them. So two on with one out and Ken Landro coming up for the Dodgers. Twice tonight, Landro has pulled the ball on the ground to Phil Garner and been thrown out. When the Astros hit in the seventh, they'll have Garner, Scott, and Cruz. They are without Cedeno. Russell at second. Ropes at first. So the Dodgers have some speed on the bases. And Landro trying to help the cause right here. One nothing Dodgers. Rule taking plenty of time. He's in a hot spot. The pick to Landro. A looper that's going to be caught by the shortstop Son, who went behind the third baseman Howe. So Landro hit it off the end of the bat and was caught by Son in the middle of the injury on the dirt park. Two away. It's up to Dusty Baker if the Dodgers are to get some insurance here in the sixth inning. Center. A single and a walk here in the inning. Baker had an RBI yesterday with a first inning double. Baker, the Dodgers' hottest hitter over the final month of the season when he hit 350. He's three for 14 in this series. Dusty, the number three hitter in the National League this year with a 320 average. Steps out. Two on, two out. Bottom of the six. Dodgers one. Astros nothing. Russell, the runner, second. Lopes at first. The outfield playing Baker. A little toward left center. Got a couple of steps over toward the alley. The stretch by Rule. And the first for the Dusty. Ground ball to third. Howe's got it. Goes down to second to Garner. plane carrying former President Ford and Carter is due to arrive at Andrews Air Force Base in just a few minutes. Former President Nixon is not with them. He's in Saudi Arabia, where he had dinner tonight with King Khalid and Crown Prince Fawd. The White House says it is not an official visit, and Mr. Nixon is not carrying messages from President Reagan. A report from the World Watch Institute says American farming methods are destroying topsoil at such a fast rate that we could have food shortages within the next few years. 250,000 West Germans rallied in Bonn today to protest nuclear weapons and American missiles on German soil. A Coast Guard cutter sailed from Cuba tonight to begin implementing a new U.S. policy of turning back illegal refugees from Haiti. A bomb planted beneath a delivery van exploded on a London street today. One woman was killed. About 40 bystanders were wounded. Jerry Hamilton, ABC News. Looking at some halftime scores in college football, there is no score at halftime in the game between Vanderbilt and Tulane. 
SMU leads Baylor 16 to 6 at halftime, 14 to 14 tie between Drake and Wichita State. Arkansas leads Texas Tech 16 to 7. Those college football scores at halftime. In golf, Ben Crenshaw edged Bill Rogers on the 36th and final hole today, reached the final of the World Match Play Golf Championship. A real thriller now goes into the seventh inning with Garner, Scott, and Cruz. And it could be a Cruz inning for Fernando here. As they go to the seventh, Dodgers leading one to nothing and a one-hitter by Fernando and a two-hitter for Rule. Okay, Fernando ready to go. He beat the Astros on opening day two to nothing. Beat them one to nothing. And he also had another one to nothing game at New York. Okay, Fernando to the windup, and here's Garner waiting in the pitch. Fly ball to right field. Mundy backing up a few steps. He's got it. One away in the seventh inning. As Garner flies to right, one down. The batter will be Tony Scott, who has struck out twice. And Jose Cruz Seven. on deck. Seventh inning, one to nothing on Guerrero's Get fifth inning home run. Guerrero hit it deep into the left field stand. Fernando started off his year, of course, with eight straight before losing a three-hitter to Philadelphia here on May the 18th. Screwball a little high, ball one to Scott. Batting from the right side, he has struck Scott out twice on screwball. Fernando has four strikeouts. Huge crowd on hand here at Dodger Stadium. Tried to explode, but the Dodgers were cut down in that sixth inning. Curve is a little high, ball two to Scott. Two and all the count. Fernando hasn't won in a while, but it's not because he hasn't pitched well. Here's a 2-0 pitch. That's low, ball three, so he goes to a three ball, no strike count. His last win, the 17th of September, he beat Atlanta 2 to nothing and lost at San Francisco 5-2 at Houston 4-1 to and at San Diego here 1 to nothing. He lost three straight at the end of the season and had no decision when the Dodgers lost in the playoffs. Here's the six, three and one ball in for a strike. He had no decision as Lyon beat the Dodgers in the first game on Tuesday. Three and one count to Scott, a right-hand batter. Doesn't want to walk in. He's been his out man. Fly ball to center field. Landro backing up a few steps. He's got this one in the two out. Two down with Cruz coming up. Cruz by the left and fouled out to Socha. So Jose Cruz, the left fielder, coming up. in the seventh inning. When the Dodgers batter in the bottom of the inning, they start with Garvey, Mundy, and Guerrero. Here's Fernando's pitch to Jose Cruz. Swing! And a miss. The two ball. All and one. Fernando strike out high for the year 10. They pitch on the way, fouled away, strike two right into the mask of umpire McCary. Fernando struck out six and eight innings in Houston. Tuesday night. Led the league with 180. So Fernando leading one to nothing. Seventh inning. Trying to send the Dodgers into tomorrow. One day at a time. The 0-2 pitch on the way. Just a little high with a fastball. Had him all set up for it. And it was just a bit high. You got to be a good hitter to let one like that go by. One and two the count to Jose Cruz. Here's the pitch on the way. Curve low, ball two. And he missed again. So it is a two and two count to Cruz. In the seventh. No hit for either side into the fifth inning. All right, a two and two count to Cruz. Here it is. Ground ball to second base. Lopes has it easily. Put in time. Foul be tight. Three up, three down. We'll go to the bottom of the seventh in a minute with a score. One to nothing, Dodgers. Well, looking at college football scores and at, at the halftime, Tennessee Tech is leading Akron seven to nothing. West Texas State leads Southern Illinois fourteen to twelve. Early in the fourth quarter, Tennessee Chattanooga leads Marshall seventeen nothing. South Carolina leads Kentucky twenty-one to fourteen late in the fourth quarter. 
Fourth ranked Pittsburgh playing without star quarterback Dan Marino. Ground out a 17 to nothing win over previously unbeaten West Virginia. Junior halfback Brian Thomas rushed for two touchdowns and runs of 43 and two yards. And Raymond Everett kicked a 39 yard field goal along with two extra points. Pitt's defense shut down the West Virginia running game and intercepted three Oliver Luck passes. Thomas knocked his first touchdown late in the first half. He took the ball up the middle, breaking several tackles, then got to the left sideline where he picked up blockers and scooted for the touchdown. His second touchdown came late in the third quarter on a two-yard plunge. on the crowd and it's a big one standing for the seventh inning stretch here at Dodger Stadium in the bottom of the seventh inning. The attendance tonight is 55,983. And it is the largest crowd to see a game other than in a World Series game at Dodger Stadium. The previous high for a regular season game, 55,185. For a World Series game, 55,997 on October the 10th, 1978, and they had 55,995 the 15th of 1977. So, the largest crowd ever to see a game except for a World Series play here at Dodger Stadium. Now, let's see about championship play. It is larger than the previous high total for a championship game in 19... 77 with Philadelphia by 10. So 55,983 of the crowd tonight as Garvey steps in. Here in the bottom of the seventh inning, and boy, this crowd is seeing a dandy. They're treated to baseball at its best. Garvey swings at a curveball, strike one. Garvey tonight is fly to left and grounded out. Vernon Rule, a two-hitter. And Fernando has pitched a one-hitter. We're in the bottom of the seventh inning. One to nothing Dodgers on a home run by Guerrero in the fifth with two out. Vernon Rue has certainly held up his end, and Fernando likewise for the Dodgers. 55,983. All right, Rue ready to go. Time from Pujols. Here's the pitch. Now by base hit left field. So Garvey got one he can handle, and hits it through the hole in the left field, and Garvey's emotional. He pops his hands together as he reaches first base, giving himself a little cheer, and then pops the back of first base and walling. So the Dodgers are trying to get up for it a little higher. And here's Mundy at bat. Mundy has slid to left and struck out. He slides deep into the left field corner in the second inning, and Cruz made a nice play on the ball. Seventh inning, one to nothing Dodgers. Garvey leads off with a base hit. The Dodgers left two men on in the sixth. In the second inning, and Cruz made a nice play on the ball. Seventh inning, one to nothing Dodgers. Garvey leads off with a base hit. The Dodgers left two men on in the sixth. The bullpen gets busy again for the Astros. They had LaCordia and Sambito down there a while ago. We'll check it again in a minute. the 0 for 2 this game. 2 for 11 now in the series. Let's see if the Dodgers have any kind of a play on. Third baseman Howe is in. He thinks Monday might be bunting. They shorten up at second base and shortstop. Double played up. And a lob throw to first base by Rule and Garvey's right on the bag. Seventh inning. Another great ball game in what has been a great series critics of the mini playoffs in the split season can be put silent after this exhibition for these two clubs. Monday front, nice one. And a goal by Rule in the first base to Wally and the sacrifice moves him over. Garvey goes into second base on the front by Monday. Rule to Wally and here's Guerrero who homered his last time up. We'll see the strategy of manager Bill Burton now. defense. Guerrero homered a line drive into the left field stands his last time up. He had 12 home runs in the regular year. Two holes, holds up one finger to indicate one out, looks toward the dugout, goes into the south, so they're pitching to Guerrero. 
And Pedro trying to get another RBI as Garvey's at second base in a one nothing ball game. The stretch by a screw, the pitch. Fly ball to left center field, not too deep. Scott coming over calling, he's got it, and we have two down. The Guerrero, first ball swing, flies to the center fielder, two away. And here's Socia at bat. Butted and is thrown out, grounded out to the first baseman. So Socia trying to pick him up. And now Verdon will call a little meeting. He might walk Socia and take a chance on Russell. He's going to go out and talk to Rule. So he got by with Guerrero. Now they'll have a meeting. And while the meeting goes on to the matter, we'll pause for station identification. This is the Los Angeles Dodgers Radio Network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. For the Dodgers, there is no tomorrow if they lose. For the Astros, there is a tomorrow if they lose. I will see the decision in a moment as Burton goes back to the dugout. Coming to bat will be Mike Stocher with an open base. And Russell, a right-hand batter on deck, to be followed by Valenzuela. They back up, and Pujols holds his glove out wide. They're going to walk Stocher and go for the right-hand batter and also possible fourth play. This will be the second walk of the game given up by Vern Rule. And this will be an intentional walk, of course, to Stocher with Russell do next. Billy singled in the sixth inning to open the inning and was left stranded. So the Dodgers for two straight innings now will have runners at first and second with two outs. Actually, they had him with one out of the last inning. The Landro popped up and Baker hit into a fourth play. Russell at bat had 22 runs batted in for the entire year. So Billy missed quite a few games. He was hurt. So a right-hand batter against right-hand pitching. Garvey at second base, and Socia on first here in the bottom of the seventh inning. one nothing Dodgers. And now Pujols goes to the mound to have a little talk with Rule. Big crowd here at Dodger Stadium. I'll say it's big. They can't put any more in here. Russell trying to do it. Garvey on second. Socia on first. Two out. Seventh inning. Fernando and Lopes both on deck. Here's the look in the pitch to Billy. Swing and a miss at a breaking ball. Strike one. 0-1 oh, the count to Russell. One home run. Nine run, uh, No home runs and 22 RBIs. And he's one for nine in the playoffs before tonight. So one for two gives him a total of two for 11. The 0-1 pitch. Looks in the right field. This one might fall. May fit. Here comes Garvey. Here's the throw going to third base. It'll be in time there, but the run scored. Close is thrown out at third, but Garvey scores on a single to right by Russell. And the throw came to third base instead of home. And that surprised the Dodgers, but they get a big, big run nonetheless. As Russell drives one into right field to score Garvey, and Poole then saw he had no chance to get Garvey through the third, and he got Sosha going in, and the Dodgers pick up a big one in the seventh inning. One run on two hits, one left on, and the score going to the eighth inning. Dodgers two, and the Astros nothing. Well, checking college football in the middle of the third quarter, Eastern Kentucky leads Middle Tennessee State 20 to nothing. Early in the fourth quarter, Jackson State is ahead of Florida A&M, 14 to 6 in that game. Late in the second quarter, Texas Arlington, 21, Louisiana Tech, 7. Still late in the second quarter, Nichols State, 28, Southern U, 7. Turning to golf, Joanne Carter fired an even par 73 Saturday to take a one-stroke lead in the $150,000 LPGA tournament at the Almaden Country Club. Amy Alcott, who shared the second round lead with Carter, held the edge until the 336-yard 17th hole when she took a double bogey six. Alcott finished at one over par 74, a shot behind the leader at four under par 215 after 54 holes. Donna Capone 
who shot a three under par 70 Friday. John Stevenson, who had a one under par 72, and Sally Little, who finished with an even par 73, were locked in a second place tie with Alcott. Two shots behind Connor were Nancy Lopez Nelson, former U.S. Women's Open champion Hollis Stacy, Vicky Fergon, and Vicky Tabor. Tabor, Fergon, and Stacy all carved three off regulation figures in the third round. Susie McAllister with five double bogeys in the three rounds with another shot back at 217 along with Cindy Hill. Well, we go to the eighth inning. Russell singling home Garvey, and Poole realized he had no chance to get Wooly. Garvey at the plate, so he threw the third to get Socher to end the inning, but the run is in, and a big one it was. Two to nothing now, Dodgers lead, and here is Walling coming on for his first at bat. He replaced Cedeno. The Astros have only one hit. It was Cedeno's single in the fifth inning, and then a little later, he was picked off, and in the rundown, pulled up lane, sliding into head first. He's pulled up with a hamstring pull, and will be out for a week to ten days. Walling at bat beat the Dodgers the last time they saw him with a single to right. Curveball is up high, one ball and no strikes. Fernando with a one-hitter working is in the eighth inning now, leading two to nothing in the biggest game he's pitched all year. Fly ball popped up into shallow center field. In comes Landro. He's there. He's calling. He's got it. One away. Five to go for Fernando. Here's Art Howe, who has grounded out twice, the second and the third. Fernando, they say, had lost two three-hitters this year. To Philadelphia, he lost four to nothing on the three hitter. He lost a three hitter to St. Louis. He won a three hitter against Atlanta, and he won a three hitter from Montreal. All right, here is Howe with Fon due up next. Top of the eighth inning, Dodgers lead two to nothing. Here's Fernando to the windup and his pitch. Fastball outside, one ball and no strike. Home run by Guerrero in the fifth inning and a single by Russell in the seventh with Garvey aboard. And the 1 0 pitch on the way. Bouncing ball over third to left field, a base hit for Howe. That's the second hit of the game given up by Fernando and brings on Dickie Son, who fouled out and walked. Dickie Dickie Thorne at bat with two holes on deck and the bullpen busy now for the Astros. If they get the rule, of course, they will use a hitter. Good to see the president of the league dropping by to enjoy a great game. Mr. Chuck Feeney. How's your golf game, Prexy? Haven't had time. <laughs> I know that. He's been busy. All right. Chuck Feeney, the president of the league here. Here's a look and the pitch on the way. Top to the first base side. Garvey will play it. And he will tie Thon going by for the out. On the out, Howe takes second base. A little older to first. Two down. And the second runner of the night for Houston arrives at second base, Art Howe. That'll bring on Lewis Pujols, the catcher, who has one home run and 14 RBIs during the regular year. He's grounded out and flat out in two trips tonight. With two away, Fernando and Socia are talking things over. Rule comes out on deck with a warm-up jacket on. It is Dodgers two and the Astros nothing. And this game is in the eighth inning top half. Okay, Pujols at bat second base, and here's a big out for Fernando to get. The pitch on the way to Luis. Scucci a little low, ball one. 1-0 one the count. The first hit of the game in the fifth inning, Cedeno a single to left. The second hit of the game, a home run by Guerrero. All right, two holes waiting. Here's the look, and here's the pitch. Shot foul at the plate. One and one to Pujol. One ball, one strike. 
eighth inning. The Dodgers two, the Astros nothing. A great series. Well, the Astros are something in extra postseason play, aren't they? They had the same kind of thing last year against Philadelphia. The 1-1 pitch to Pujols, Ryan fouled upstairs, one and two. They went to overtime three out of five, and of course they had to play the last four games of the regular season right here at Dodger Stadium. And a couple of those were overtime. And then they finally won the playoff game on a Monday. They go into the championship against Philadelphia. All right, one and two to Pujols. Runner on second right now. Here's the look. The one-two pitch on the way. Bouncing ball. Back to Fernando. He's got it. He throws him out. And the inning is over. He went high in the air to Spirit. A good field he's played by Valenzuela. No runs. One hit. One left. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth in a moment. Dodgers two. The Astros nothing. Good check back over what's uh, been going on on the UPI 20 college football team. Spirit, how they made out it today on Saturday the 10th. Southern California lost to Arizona 13 to 10. Penn State defeated Boston College 38 to 7. Texas defeated Oklahoma 34 to 14. Pittsburgh beat West Virginia 17 to nothing. North Carolina beat Wake Forest 48 to 10. Michigan defeated Michigan State 38 to 20. Alabama tied Southern Mississippi 13 to 13. Brigham Young lost to Nevada Las Vegas 45 to 41. Georgia defeated Mississippi 37 to 7. Clemson beat Virginia 27 to nothing. Missouri defeated Kansas. Brother Kansas State 58 to 13. Oklahoma lost to Texas 34 to 14. Miami of Florida did not play today. Iowa State played at San Diego State. No score there. Iowa defeated Indiana 42 to 28. Well, we go to the bottom of the eighth inning, and guess who's going to start it off for the Dodgers? That's right, Fernando will be the first hitter, with Lopes and Landro to follow, and what an exhibition tonight by these two guys. Try rule. Boy, Scuddy and really stick to it, isn't it? He comes out of Detroit to the minors, to Houston to the minors. He came back, had an operation on his back. Still hung in there, and pitching an outstanding game tonight, but he's been dusted so far, as we go to the bottom of the eighth inning, the Dodgers lead them two to nothing. Through last time, lost to Ruth and three to nothing. and grounded out and rolled to the lineup and the pitch. Serve is low, ball one. When Fernando beat Tom Sutton one to nothing in Houston, he drove in the only run of the game. But tonight it's been Guerrero and Russell who have driven in the two Dodger runs. The pitch. High bouncer behind the bag. Good stop by Garner, throws him out, one away. Need Fernando on the bases anyway. They need him sitting down and resting for a ninth inning that will start with a pinch hitter and then the top of the batting order. So Garner makes a good play. And here is Davey Lopes. Grounded out twice and walk. Four hits for the Dodgers. Two of those by Billy Russell. One to drive in a run and the other hit. A home run by Guerrero for the first hit for the Dodgers. And a single by Garvey. He scored a run. Garvey's had five hits in the four games. Russell's had three. Guerrero's had three. Okay, here's Lopes down the eighth inning. A fine game for Rule and a fine game for Fernando. Curveball grounded to third, backhanded by Howe. Swings it across two away. Two down in the eighth inning. And Kenny Landro will come on now. Landro has grounded out twice and popped up. In the ninth, we'll see a hitter for Rue, and Poole and Garner, and if anybody gets on, Scott and then Cruz. So don't go wandering off. Landro, none for three, and three for 15 now in the championship series. The Dodgers inching closer to a tomorrow, and a date with Nolan Ryan, uh, with Jerry Royce opposing. 
pitch is in for strike to Landro. The Dodgers haven't done too well against Ryan the last two times out. Here's the pitch. Fly ball to right field and he hit it deep. Oh, moving back for it though, has a play and makes the catch to retire the strike. So they're gone in order in the eighth inning. We'll go to the faithful ninth in a moment. Ross will be here with more play with a score. Dodgers two, the Astros nothing. Catching up on college football, this final score just in. The South Carolina beat Kentucky 28-14. to 14. At halftime, Nickel State leads Southern U 28-7. to 7. The battering runs of A.J. Jones softened Oklahoma's defense, and Rick McIver hit two touchdown passes to turn the momentum and carry third-ranked Texas to a 34-14 victory over Oklahoma. It was a 76 renewal of one of college football's bitterest rivalries, taking advantage of costly Texas mistakes, including a fumble on the opening kickoff. The 12th-ranked centers held a 14-3 halftime lead, but the Longhorns overwhelmed their opponents in the second half. Texas overcame the halftime deficit with 17 points in the third quarter and put the game away with a 42-yard march to open the final period. Jones gained 134 yards on 36 carries. And briefly, Mike Whiting caught a five-yard pass from Rick Stockdale midway through the fourth quarter, lifting 19th-ranked Florida State to a 19-13 victory over Notre Dame. The loss, the third against the two wins for the Irish, gives Notre Dame its worst start in 18 years. Right now. 
the largest non-World Series crowd in Dodger Stadium history. See, if Fernando can do it, can get the Dodgers even. Garner waiting. 0-1. Fernando out of the stretch. Here's the pitch. Breaking ball. It's a simulcast, radio and television. One out, top of the ninth inning, Dodger Stadium. Garner Lee with the count 0-2, and Tony Scott on deck. Fernando out of the trick. Here's the pitch. Ground ball to second. Lutz has got it. The runner will go to third, but there's the second out of the inning. And Harvey takes the throw for Lutz. Two away with Poole. The last note for Houston tonight is Tony Scott. He has struck out flying. He has fly the center. We have gotten here in one hour and 56 minutes. And Fernando Valenzuela, who turned in eight shutouts during the regular season, an all-time rookie record in the National League, and tying a major league rookie record, is one out away from another white boy. The crowd standing in the Dodger Stadium is the right hand hitting Tony Scott. Is one inside for a ball. One and all. If there's a fifth game, we'll join you at 12.45 tomorrow afternoon. KABC and the Dodger Radio Network, KCTV, Channel 11. Jerry Rice will be working on three days rest like Fernando was tonight. Nolan Ryan to go for Houston. The pitch to Scott is a look to the left field and will fall for the base hit. Two will score to make it 2-1, Dodgers. Fernando loses his shutout, and the Astros have the time on the board of the ninth inning and the dangerous Jose Cruz coming to the plate. So Tony Scott, who's currently hitting the club 200 right-handed, comes up with a looping single to left field to drive off the Astros' first run. It's hit number four off Valenzuela. Guerrero goes to the mound to say something to Fernando. Cruz tonight is 0 for 3. He has fly to left. He has fouled out to Sosa. He has bounced to second. So Fernando does not have a shutout coming his way tonight. All he wants now is a victory. Dodgers still Astros won. Cruz, the Astros pop home run hit of this year with 13 winnings. Valenzuela goes to first and almost threw it away. Garvey had to reach across Scott's body and backhand it. Otherwise, that ball is against the auxiliary scoreboard and Scott might be at third base. Valenzuela kicks the day off in the fifth inning. On the play, Cesar aggravated his hand for his ball had to come out. The pitch to Cruz. Dodgers two, Astros one. Scott representing the tying run at first base. Blue, a member of the All-Star team a year ago. A dangerous hit away from the left side. Fernando running in the 0-1 pitch. Low for the ball, 1-1. One one. Gave him another through ball. One ball and one strike to Jose Cruz. Over the first, a lob toss to Garner, and got back easily. With the Astros' chance sending Scott, he's stolen 18 bases. He's been caught 10 times this year. Alan Doyle is one one pitch to Cruz. Whoa, ball two, two and one. On deck, scheduled to hit another left-handed batter, Denny Wally. Service time at Dodger Stadium.
a two to one victory over the Astros, and this National League Mini Series, friends, is all even at two games apiece. Tomorrow, Jerry Royce against Nolan Ryan to decide who wins the National League West. But tonight, in a pitching dandy, a battle of four hitters, Valenzuela, Beth Rule. We'll be back with more from Dodger Stadium in a moment.